What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video guys, I'm going to be keeping it short and sharp. I'm going to be letting you guys know what to do with Lockie Whitfield, along with what guys to target at the business end of the season. I will be covering some cheaper guys and some more expensive types. Excuse the noise in the background, it is raining today in Perth, or tonight shall I say. So enjoy the video guys. So jumping straight into issues this week, Kyle Langford, hamstring, two to three weeks, that's a trade. The more popular one, the one that a lot of people have is Lockie Whitfield. He has been ruled out with concussion, so he will be missing in round 18. You can either trade or hold here. For most people and most scenarios, I suggest opting for a trade as points at this stage of the season are vital and he is worth quite a bit of salary. So carrying a guy like him on the bench, although I do think he is a top six defender, it's probably just not the viable move at this stage. Having said that, if you've got two rookies or three rookies on the field still, you could choose to hold him and upgrade one of those rookies to a premium. If you do this, you're gonna have the same amount of rookies on the field regardless, but you will have that one extra premium back if Whitfield is to return next week, which you'd think he would, but with no fixtures available yet, if they do have a short turnaround, he may miss the two games. It's unlikely, but it is a possibility. It is something to consider. I'd only really be considering a hold if you still have multiple rookies on the field. As for some guys that I like this week, look, I won't spoil the list in terms of top targets just yet, but I mean, big dog Brody Grundy, look, he's absolutely a must-have. Huge on the weekend, as we expected, against a pretty... Uh, Poor ruck lineup that is Marby Ochoa and the Richmond side. He comes up against Carlton this week. He should be big. Look, he's he's going to be close to 120 for the rest of the year. So I'd be getting on board now. Uh, Taylor Adams, Clayton Oliver, and Lockie Neal. All these guys are underpriced. I think they all go close to 110, maybe a little bit more even. In terms of priorities, you'll see where I rank these guys later in the video, but I think they're all options. Jordan Degoe, whilst he's not that super enticing price like he was the last two weeks, he still is a top option. I do think with his current role, the way Collingwood are playing, he's now a top six forward. I expect him to maintain this role for the rest of the year. And this is probably the last week to jump on board. So for that reason, I've got him quite high on the targets this week. Christian Salem's a unique defender option. I think he's bordering that top six. Uh, Matt Kennedy is interesting for Carlton. Uh, he wasn't super last week, but I thought he was decent. I did actually bring him in last week, and whilst he only scored 74, his game was solid. His role was still there, and he got unlucky. He gave away a couple frees. He missed a couple tackles. It could have easily been a 90 score, and Carlton have a very lenient draw coming up too, so I expect him to be quite solid. He's one that I can recommend if you're quite strapped for cash. Rowan Marshall's another one that's super cheap. His time on ground's been quite low in recent times, so I probably wouldn't be jumping on board him just yet, despite his fantasy history. I just think that we need to see a little bit more of an increase in time on ground before pulling the trigger on a guy like Marshall. 
Uh, Nat Fife was fantastic last week. I think Frio, now that they're in the eight and pushing for finals, although Fife did have that shoulder concern, I do think that he's really going to step up in the last few rounds of the season. And I can expect him to be that 95 to 100 type. He's in and around that top six forward criteria. And he's also priced at 85. So the value's there. I think he's a good option at this stage. Uh, who else do we have? Jack Bowes, mid 500s. I'm not super keen on Jack Bowes. He is very cheap. And look, when you compare, when you look at his numbers from the start of the year, he was posting some elite scores, but he doesn't seem to have that kicking role anymore. It looks like Lacocious, who's who was playing up on a wing early in the year. He's now playing more defense and he's taking the kick-ins for the Gold Coast Suns. On top of that, Bose is also playing roughly 10% less game time since returning from injury. So for those reasons, I'm not super hot on him, but if he's all you can get for in terms of upgrading a rookie to someone, then I don't think he's the worst option. Uh, Jake Lloyd is probably my pick of the defenders at a cheaper price. I think Lloyd, whilst he's had some concerns throughout the year, playing a slightly different role, he took 11 of 12 kick-ins last week and absolutely racked it up. I expect Lloyd to average 100 to 105 for the rest of the year. I think he will be a top six. His ownership's relatively low. Uh, at 10% within the top 50. So he, he's a top target for mine. Cam Guthrie's interesting. He's dropped a lot in salary. His break even still quite high, but he does have that ceiling ability. Andrew Gaff's getting cheap. Uh, Stringer, you can chuck him in the same category as uh, Dugowie. Um I'll touch on Tim Kelly quickly. I think Tim Kelly... He looked like a super option due to being 568k, very cheap. But I did see some vision of him having some issues with his knee at training yesterday. And it doesn't look like he's likely to get up for this weekend. Or in what I saw in the vision, it looked like he was struggling with that knee. He did uh, leave the track early. So not great signs, especially because this is the knee that he just missed um, those recent games with. So I'd probably be avoiding Kelly. Uh, I expect him not to be named. If he is named, they'll probably strap him up. He'll probably be hindered. It, it's just a red flag for me. Um, so I'd be avoiding there regardless now. Uh, Josh Dunkley could be back for the Dogs. And look, with his break even, it's not super high. Uh, there is the risk factor of how much game time are they going to give him and what role is he going to get. But at this stage of the competition, with his break even, he's probably not going to drop that much salary considering there's only six rounds to go. And if you've got some big coin there, it's a risk, but he could be a super unique point of difference he's zero percent ownership at the moment because he's been injured for so long so if you've got the balls jumping on him first game off the rip might not be the worst play and i'll just round things out with Jaden short uh he's highly owned so for that reason i'm not a big fan on him but basher hooley out of the side i do expect short's output to increase slightly so those are just a few Guys that I think have either slight value or they're just a bit cheaper than some of the top guys. In terms of my top targets for this week, we've got Brody Grundy at number one, Jordan Degoe at number two, number three sits Taylor Adams, Clayton Oliver at four, Lockie Neal at five, and Jake Lloyd at six. In terms of what I suggest you guys do with your moves this week is... At this stage, points on field, you want to be trading your worst players on your field and going to the best available options. If you can get to a best 22 player, then that is ideal as 
you want as many of these guys as possible and if you're paying full price then so be it especially in forward and defense if you don't have guys like mills laird those types of players i'd just pay up and get those guys if you want to see some of my thoughts in a bit more detail i will have my website linked in the description with this week's trade guide which will go into some of these players plus a couple more players in a bit more depth give you a bit of reasoning behind why i do like them if you want to see what my best 22 looks like that is also in the same article that's going to wrap things up for this video guys I hope you've enjoyed the video. If it's helped you in your trades this week, make sure to drop a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more AFL fantasy content. If you have any queries with trades this week, drop them in the comments below. I'll make sure to give you a hand. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my plaid, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit looks like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She